9.12, the faithful should distinguish carefully between the rights and duties which they have as belonging to the church and those which fall to them as members of the human society. They will strive to unite the two harmoniously, remembering that in every temporal affair they are to be guided by a Christian conscience, since no human activity, even of the temporal order, can be withdrawn from God's dominion. 9.13 Thus every person, through these gifts given to him, is at once the witness and the living instrument of the mission of the church itself, according to the measure of Christ's bestowal. 3. The Consecrated Life 9.14 the state of life which is constituted by the profession of the evangelical councils, while not entering into the hierarchical structure of the church, belongs undeniably to her life and holiness. Evangelical Councils Consecrated Life 915 Christ proposes the evangelical councils in their great variety to every disciple. The perfection of charity to which all the faithful are called entails for those who freely follow the call to consecrated life the obligation of practicing chastity in celibacy for the sake of the kingdom, poverty, and obedience. It is the profession of these counsels within a permanent state of life recognized by the Church that characterizes the life consecrated to God. 9.16 the state of consecrated life is thus one way of experiencing a more intimate consecration rooted in baptism and dedicated totally to God. In the consecrated life, Christ faithful, moved by the Holy Spirit, propose to follow Christ more nearly, to give themselves to God who is loved above all, and, pursuing the perfection of charity in the service of the kingdom, to signify and proclaim in the church the glory of the world to come.